The spirit of Jesus is to remind you that Jesus is your advocate, has been your advocate, and you now are righteous. So he will counsel you in real time what to do, how to conduct yourself. He'll anchor you back to the word, the living word, Jesus, and he'll remind you who you are, which is how he works as an advocate. Now, now, now if Jesus forgave you all of your sins, notice the words of Jesus, the, la the seven statements he breathed out on the cross while suffocating in his own blood. What was the last statement? It is finished, which is to say it is complete. All sins are now able to be forgiven if we simply accept the free gift that only Jesus offers. So it is finished works into the future, it works in the past, and it works in the present. So when you receive the forgiveness of Jesus, you're not just receiving forgiveness for sins you can remember or sins you've done, you're also being forgiven for the future sins that you will commit. So why would the Spirit of Jesus convict you of something that's been forgiven. Hold on a second. Don't stone me. Why would Jesus say, you're forgiven, but hey, that's really bad and you should stop? Well, I thought you forgave me. So here's what he does. He convicts, the advocate convicts you of righteousness. The focus is not sin. The focus is the finished work of Jesus that conquered sin. And so the spirit of Jesus does not use condemnation or guilt or shame, for none of that produces the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Only Jesus can do that for us. He who knew no sin became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So here's how it works. You start to sin. You're already forgiven, but you start to sin. You're sinning, and yet that sin's already been forgiven. So you know how the spirit works on the inside, the spirit of Jesus? He nudges you just like this. He says, that's not who you are. That's not who you are. It's not who you are. Well, 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 who am I? You're righteous. You're righteous. You got right standing with God. You don't want that. That's, that's your old life. That's your old appetites. That's your old desires. Those won't fulfill. That's not who you are. The Spirit of God does not move in and say, look at you. Look how bad you are. Look, you did it again. I know what you did last summer. I can't believe you did it again. How bad are you? Guilt, guilt, guilt. Shame, shame, shame. Judgment, judgment, judgment. And no wonder we are not very nice to people. Who's we? Jesus followers. Because again, we've doubled down the fear and anxiety with shame and guilt. And now we're walking around going, I, I thought I loved Jesus, but I can't keep his commandments. And now the spirit of Jesus is inside of me reminding me, you can't keep his commandments. You never keep his commandments. Your batting average stinks. And now we're just like, ah, oh, and no wonder people don't want to come to church. I don't want to be reminded. I've already reminded internally. Judgment, sin. No, 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 no. I've already been judged righteous. Sins forgiven and covered because of Jesus. It is finished. Jesus is more righteous than you have ever been sinful. Your sin has been covered in his righteousness. And now... You are, you are, you are, you are. Don't mean like you always act like it, but you are. We are, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And my advocate on a regular basis reminds me, that's who you are. Hey, you're not acting like who you are, but I still love you. This is who you are. Be more who you are. Be true to yourself. Be true to who God has made you to be, designed you to be. That's who you are. And here comes the goodness of God that leads us to repent. Repent.